We are closing in towards the end of the Shyak Champion Fusion, and throughout this fusion it's become very clear to me how important it is to have champions that can do multiple roles. So for example, I'm farming during the Dragon Tournament with anywhere from two to three food champions as a part of my team to essentially level them up quicker than I would otherwise, uh, as well as to basically just double dip into some champion training as well as the Dragon Tournament. I am going to be showing you one of the champions that I think is the best for doing all sorts of content so whether that be dungeons doom tower waves all that sort of good stuff we're going to be talking about her the champion as you could probably tell from the thumbnail unless i've changed it for some odd reason is going to be a venomage venomage was a interesting champion for me because for a long long time she was on my most wanted list i wanted her a ton and then by the time i actually had her i still had some other poisoners all right, I had other poisoners at that point, like Tomb Lord, for example, that could do the same thing, but maybe a little bit better in my mind, those sorts of things. However, I still went ahead and built her, and let me say I was not disappointed whatsoever. So I'm going to be doing a little showcase on her here today, showing you guys how I have her built and what sort of stats you want to be prioritizing, where she's useful, all those sorts of good things. So let's go ahead and hop into it. First thing we're looking at is her kit. A1 attacks one enemy two times, destroys the target's max HP by 75% of the damage inflicted if they're under a heal reduction. Each hit also has a 50% chance of activating up to two poison debuffs on the target. So something kind of like a Dark Kale A1 there, which is pretty cool. A2 attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance of placing a decreased defense, also a 100% chance of placing a decreased attack if the target is under a poison debuff. This is going to be very good, obviously, for any sort of boss-based skills, right? So if you're taking her into clan boss, if you're taking her into uh, somewhere like Sidentronos, so a lot of the bosses in there, uh, dragons, those sorts of things, right? Having that decreased attack as well as the decreased defense is very, very nice. A3, her big money skill attacks all enemies. 100% chance of placing a heal reduction for 3 turn on a 3 turn cooldown. Also has a 100% chance of placing 2 5% poison debuffs for 2 turns. Now she also has a passive that enemies under heal reduction debuffs inflict 15% less damage, and she has an aura of accuracy in all battles. This champion was basically specifically made to just be able to solo content, which is absolutely insane. The accuracy aura means that you're going to be building her with significantly less accuracy, right? Because a lot of it can come from her own aura. Uh, and then obviously the passive means that it's going to be a little bit easier to keep her to survive, as well as those decreased attack debuffs are definitely going to help with that too. Uh, and for blessing, I do recommend emergency heal. And then for the artifacts, having some sort of a blood shield accessory. That's essentially going to ensure that anytime she's hit, she's immediately healing back for a certain portion of the damage that was inflicted to her. Let's go ahead and take a look at her stats here. This is how I have her built out, so let's go ahead and throw Dragon, for example, because I'll be showing you a Dragon run. So she has 67,000 HP, 3,700 defense, 204 speed, 280 on the accuracy, 371 on the resistance, crit rate, crit damage don't really matter all that much. She doesn't hit hard per se, she just places a lot of debuffs that do damage. In terms of the gear, I do have her built out in a regeneration and an immortal set. You could easily prioritize, you know, multiple immortal sets depending on what sort of gear you have on your account. Anything that's going to allow her to be tanky, go fast, and heal herself is going to be the way to go, essentially. Although you don't really want, like, lifesteal or something like that, just because, again, she's not doing much damage on her own. And unfortunately, you can't really heal from those poisons. I'm going to go ahead and throw an infographic here on screen now that's going to talk about which sort of stats you want to build her with. So we're primarily looking, of course, speed as pretty much a first priority. And then after, sorry, not speed, uh, HP as a first priority and then after that you're specking into speed, accuracy, and resistance to get her through whatever content you need. Now if you're meeting all of the other thresholds, so for example if you have her with like 100k HP and a bunch of defense and all that sort of stuff, at that point you can really start to spec into like crit damages and crit rates and all that sort of stuff too just to get some extra damage out of her. Uh, but at the end of the day I think having her stay alive is going to be a little bit more important. And again her passive really helps with that as well too, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at her masteries. I have her built out with Eagle Eye, which is going to help her to have a little bit more accuracy on her build. I have her with Evil Eye, which is going to decrease their turn meter when she hits them with the A1, which is pretty nice, by a full 20%. Extra accuracy on the uh, pinpoint there. She has Lore of Steel, just so that any base stat increases are going to be a little bit stronger, so the HP bonuses and stuff like that from Immortal, for example. She also has Swarm Smiter, which increases accuracy. And she has uh, Arcane Celerity, so that means that there's a 30% chance of placing 
sorry, increasing our turn meter by 10% when a debuff cast by this champion is removed or expires, and basically every skill she has has a chance of placing a debuff. Keep in mind she's also popping those poisons, so if she pops poisons on somebody and then, you know, they have no debuffs after that, they're expired, she's essentially just going to give herself more turn meter too, which is pretty crazy. And then obviously we have her built out into the defense tree here too, with a little bit of survivability, turn meter increases, all that sort of good stuff. In terms of blessings, I definitely, like I mentioned, I recommend Emergency Heal. Uh, everything from the new Harmony Tree is probably not going to be too, too useful unless you're using her somewhere like Hydra. Uh, you could also try her out with Nature's Wrath, though, so getting the damage inflicted by her increased, right? So at max level, it's going to increase by 5% for every debuff they place, up to 30%. I don't know if this stacks across rounds. It might say it does not. So, uh, so... It's not going to place debuffs by gear sets, right? So obviously it still counts on her poison and all that sort of good stuff. Um, apart from that, though, there's not really too, too much that you could run her in that would make sense. She's not really healing or anything like that. Indomitable Spirit might be okay just trying to block any sort of debuffs that you have incoming from, you know, A1 provokes or something like that on the ads. But at the end of the day, I don't really think that's worth switching off the Emergency Heal. I think Emergency Heal is one of the strongest blessings that we can have in 2024, at least, for uh, any sort of solo champion, right? So just get Emergency Heal on them, even at one star, and then put some sort of a Blood Shield accessory on them. It's going to boost their uh, survivability significantly. I'm going to go ahead and pop a video up here on screen, showing you a run of her and Kemptum doing a duo run through Dragon 20. Now, obviously, if you have better gear on her or other champions you can run her with, especially some sort of a support, so like a Lady Aerith is my favorite combination, actually, just to keep her healed, supported, all that sort of good stuff, you can definitely run this. I actually have a team that can do a duo farm on Dragon Hard 2 as well, uh, but of course, like, some of this gear is pretty intensive, so I don't really want to showcase that because it might ostracize some players, especially if you're in, you know, mid game early game those sorts of things it's probably a little bit more attainable to do the build that i'm showing here today uh, especially if you have the great hall built out and stuff like that as well so you can see uh did they remove the great hall they might have but the great hall is giving like 80 actually affinity bonuses is what it's listed as now so it's giving like 80 accuracy and resistance so a significant amount of that is coming from the great hall right let's go ahead and talk about where she's useful so in terms of use case you can use this champion pretty much anywhere and i'm not even being hyperbolic when i say that i use her a ton in cursed city to get through some stages you can use her on doom tower normal or hard to really push through the waves as you're climbing it right so having her but the heal reduction, which makes them inflict less damage, is basically a strengthen for your team, which is incredible. It really just helps everybody survive. You can use her in classic clan boss, of course. You could technically use her inside Hydra as well, although I probably wouldn't recommend it. She doesn't bring too many amazing things for Hydra runs, so it'd probably be a bit questionable. Arena is not really her spot. She is fantastic for faction wars, though, so I do actually still use her in my Lizardman faction wars as well. I always seem to record these videos somehow when that particular faction is not open. It's almost uncanny but uh, I haven't failed yet <laughs> uh, in terms of dungeon she is fantastic everywhere so I highly recommend her for spider hard if you have some sort of like a poison explosion or an attempt based team obviously she can come in and you know solo or duo dragon slayer she's fantastic for fire knight because of course she's placing those heal reductions so if you can't keep his shield down at least you can stop him from healing which is very annoying especially in the early game right trying to keep it down as well as stop the healing it's it's a lot to go over once you get a lure, though, she can basically take over there. Uh, Minotaur, she can solo quite easily. And, of course, she could be useful in a lot of the arcane keeps as well. And maybe help you out inside Iron Twins, although there's better champions for that, like a Geomancer or a Ninja or basically anybody else that can just do a lot of damage, right? So, that being said, though... Uh, I think this champion is definitely one of the best epics that you can build out, and probably one of the best epics, in all honesty, that you can empower as well if you have duplicates of her hanging around. If we go ahead and take a look at the Lizardmen, they aren't too incredibly strong when it comes to the epic champions, so if you're struggling to get through Faction Wars, she might be a champion that you can look to and really rely on to help carry you through those stages, because she's going to have everybody doing less damage, which is going to keep somebody like, say, for example, a Broadma alive a little bit easier so that they can revive and just heal and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, Jar Egg is another very good mention as well. These two combined are giving a lot of protection to your team, which is insane. I hope this video helped, though. I hope this helped to showcase what uh, you know, Venomage is about a little bit more in depth. I hope this build really gives you some ideas for how to use her. Thank you guys all so much for the support on the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.